Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, once again I'm coming to you from Hinokicho Park. Uh, this is my second video here today. Uh, I'm sitting right next to the pond here at the park and maybe you can hear the waterfall running in the distance and uh, you'll probably hear a few kids running around here today. Uh, it's, it's Saturday afternoon the, and the park is quite busy and though it's a little bit cloudy and cool today. Spring is coming and all the flowers are starting to bloom so it's a wonderful day to come to the park. And it's a wonderful day to make videos about cameras. And my second camera video today is going to be about uh, a fun camera which I've had for a few years now and which I've shot quite a lot here at this park over the years and that is the Minolta X1 35mm SLR camera. Uh, the Minolta X1 is kind of an oddity. Uh, they weren't produced for a very long time. Uh, Minolta had introduced this camera hoping that it would compete well against the Nikon F2 and Canon F1 uh, pro-level SLR cameras, but the X1 never really caught on with uh, professional photographers, and it just remains kind of an unusual oddity among uh, the high-end uh, SLR cameras uh, produced in those days. Uh, it has about the same weight and balance as F1 and F2, and uh, though it has a really big and quirky looking meter, uh, it's not so different than some of the meters which were available for the, the Canon and the Nikon. I'll go ahead and describe the features and functions of the uh, X1. Starting from the top here, we have the film rewind uh, knob. I have film loaded in the camera right now because this is one which I shoot pretty often, so uh, I won't open the film door. Around this we have uh, uh, a bayonet mount for attaching, or slide-on bayonet mount, to attach a flash uh, mounting bracket. So just like the Nikon F2 and the Canon F1, uh, Minolta used a flash adapter which was set on the side because uh, the interchangeable prism system made it difficult to mount a flash uh, hot shoe or a cold shoe on the top. Uh, coming next to this, and speaking of the uh, prism, uh, here we have the, uh, one of three prisms available for the X1. And this one is the AE prism, which allows for automatic exposure, as you can see by the auto setting located here on the shutter speed dial. On the top here we have the film speed dial, which you set to match the speed of the film you have loaded into the camera. Uh, on the back of the prism, uh, we have a switch here to turn off and on the meter. This is a, an accessory switch and is not really necessary to operate the camera. And I'll explain the reason for this shortly. And over here we have a, a door, a shutter, which uh, opens and closes uh, the viewfinder window in the back. And this enhances the uh, accuracy of the light meter by preventing any light from getting in here. Say if you're taking a, a, a photo on the tripod and your eye is not blocking off the light, uh, when this is left open, light gets inside and it can affect the meter of the reading. So if you're taking a shot uh, uh, on a tripod and not looking through the viewfinder, uh, close this window to get the most accurate uh, meter reading uh, possible. And uh, of course we have uh, the film winding and shutter cocking lever and the shutter button in the middle here which accepts the standard cable release. And here we have uh, the film counter dial. I'm up to about um, 28 exposures, so I got about uh, maybe eight or nine left on this uh, roll of film. Uh, interesting thing about the uh, camera here is the shutter speed range. Uh, it has a primary shutter speed range of one two thousandth of a second all the way to one second. And then there's a secondary scale here which will run all the way up to 16 seconds. So uh, quite an uh, interesting feature which these cameras had, but which didn't come on the other Pro SLR cameras, uh, such as from uh, Canon and Nikon. Another odd thing here which these cameras come with is this thing called a sensor switch. So uh, when you press this switch, uh, it activates the meter inside the camera, and to, uh, if you're shooting in manual mode, all you have to do is line up your settings to, to match the needle inside the viewfinder. However, uh, if you're shooting in uh, automatic mode and you don't have this lever pressed and you fire the shutter, the shutter will fire at its maximum speed of 16 seconds, uh, which is a, a really long time. So uh, uh, if you're firing in auto mode, and uh, make sure that you hold this when you pull, push down the shutter button. When I first got this camera, I didn't understand how this worked, and I assumed that the camera just simply didn't work in automatic mode. It, but uh, the camera worked fine, it was just the photographer that wasn't working right. And I just had to figure out how to use the camera. You can avoid the 
uh, sense a switch uh, confusion by simply turning on the meter with this switch on the back. Uh, this switches it on. Once it's on, you don't have to worry about the switch or whatever. The camera will work fine in the automatic mode. Uh, right here we have a mechanical self timer and on the bottom here we have a depth of field uh, preview lever. Uh, you, push, you, you push it in to unlock it and release it and there's a locking switch here which you can turn to lock it in place and push it back in uh, to open the aperture back up. You can see the aperture blades moving as I move the lever. On the other side here we have a selector lever for the X-Sync or default uh, shutter speed for uh, when using a flash. And of course here we have the uh, release uh, button for the uh, lens. Uh, this lens I have mounted a 50 millimeter f1.4 row core lens, MC row core. Uh, uh, you can fit a, a large variety of lenses on these cameras. So, uh, and the Minolta row core lenses are, are not uh, as uh, collectible or as expensive as the Nikon cameras um, uh, for a, the price of a, a single decent uh, Nikkor 50mm f1.4 lens, I can get a box full of these uh, uh, MC row cores. And I think they work every bit as well as the, the Nikkor lenses. Uh, on the bottom of the camera here, we have uh, uh, kind of a selector switch, which allows you to uh, select and show the number of exposures of film you have, and also the kind of film you have, whether it's color f slide film, negative film, black and white, or whatever. Uh, this is the battery chamber here. Uh, you can use a couple of uh, LR144 uh, batteries, or SR, or, or SR44 batteries, excuse me. And this is the release lever, which uh, releases the winding mechanism so you can rewind the film. Now, uh, once I got used to using this camera, I actually enjoyed uh, using it. And the park around here where I'm sitting right now is quite scenic. It has a beautiful garden and uh, some interesting architecture, lots of things to photograph. and. Uh, when my daughter was younger and was uh, going to daycare every day, uh, we'd walk around the park here and uh, take pictures with this camera. So I've got a lot of uh, her uh, little girl pictures uh, taken with this particular one. Uh, if you like to shoot an, an unusual camera, one that uh, not everyone on the block happens to have, the X1 is a good choice. Uh, if you like a professional level, uh, professional quality SLR camera from the 70s, which allows you to shoot in aperture priority automatic or shutter priority automatic or full manual, uh, it's a great camera. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have uh, the mechanical uh, shutter like the Nikon F2 uh, has, and the electronic mechanism isn't as reliable as what you find on like the, the Canon SLR cameras. About one in three of these uh, Minolta X1 uh, or XM cameras I come across doesn't work due to faulty electronics. And uh, though I've tried to take them apart and fix them, they're just, you know, I'm good with mechanical things, but uh, yeah, I'm dangerous with a soldering iron, so I don't even, you know, after a couple of attempts, I just gave up on them. They make interesting paperweights. So, uh, uh, overall, a really good camera when they work right, and though uh, you, you have to work on them, work with them a little bit before you can get them, uh, I guess, master them. Uh, they're still very good cameras, and I really love the MC Rocor lenses. They give you some options which um, uh, uh, other makers don't have. I really love the Rocor uh, 58 millimeter f 1.2 lens, one of my favorites. I've got one um, uh, lost somewhere in my closet. That's why I have the f 1.4 lens here. I usually shoot with the f 1.2. Uh, it, it, the design of the lens suits the camera well, and with the 1 2,000th uh, shutter speed and slow film, I can usually get away with using it, uh, shooting wide apertures on a nice sunny day. And uh, the other lenses, um, yeah, good stuff. Anyway, uh, that's about it for my video today. I don't have a lot more to add. I've got a bunch of kids walking this direction, so I think I better end the video before they start jumping in the pond behind me. Uh, if you're interested in uh, vintage Japanese cameras uh, and want to see more videos, uh, please subscribe. If you're looking to buy a vintage Japanese camera, I sell these in my Etsy and eBay stores. Please check the description below the video for links to my stores. Uh, if you like the video, uh, please give me a thumbs up and uh, hope you tune in again soon. Uh, thanks a lot and goodbye.